I'm very uncomfortable right now, but nevertheless. The, Plow forward. <laughs> in a dominant fashion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this, the, the blog post titled Rape Spectrum Survey Results. Mm. What are the key takeaways from that survey? So I did the survey when I had a friend be like, hey, I had this confusing sexual experience. Was it rape? Like somebody kind of pressured her and she eventually stopped saying it or something. I was like, that's a great question. Like, I don't know how people would consider this. And so I put a whole bunch of different gray uh, scenarios uh, into a survey and then asked people to rate how rapey they thought that scenario was. So you actually like little, nar- like little narratives that yeah. they get to rate. Like, you know, this person is on a date with this person, they get drunk, and the other person's not drunk. I try to keep gender-neutral uh, names for all of them. And they re- you reduce them into a more concise description of the situation? Yeah. Like in this visualization, so you have this rape spectrum that's a result. Yeah. Where on top are things that are less likely to be considered rape by the people that took the survey, and the bottom okay. more likely... The the likeliest is a stranger forcibly assaults someone who screams and fights the entire time that gets a hundred. Um, what do we make of something that's not zero? It's like a twelve is what? What is that? How are we supposed to interpret a twelve out of a hundred? Extremely on a low. Okay, <laughs> so it's like not zero, but it's just very close to it. Having sex with an enthusiastic sex worker. Yeah, is a twelve. That's the lowest one. And there's uh, a few, I'll just mention a few that are lower, like at, at that level. Have sex to make a partner happy in a relationship, lying about wealth, hobbies in order to get laid. Person with Down syndrome eagerly has sex with a neurotypical, not revealing being transgender until after sex and so on. I think you mentioned that there's some, like that not revealing being transgender until after sex, there's some differences amongst what men and women or something yeah, th- like that i think that was the one that men found more offensive yeah. than women i'm trying to remember. i wrote it a while ago uh, i mean uh this is nuanced and difficult right is because uh i think in a lot of public discourse the word rape is pretty binary yeah it's like it's either is or is not rape and so you had a friend where it was like this felt rapey yeah, she's like confused about how to interpret it. Yeah. And I think that people look to the terms to know how to feel about something. Yeah. Like, have you ever like been through an experience? You're like, that was weird. And then you tell it to somebody else and they're like, oh my God, you were assaulted. Yeah. And then it totally recontextualizes the thing that you've experienced. And I think that this is clunky with the word rape because you, either you were raped or you're not. You either like have this entire context like thrust upon you or you don't. Yeah. And we're really not nuanced about it at all. And so I would really like to have some sort of like, oh, that was like a 30% rape you just endured. Yeah, and that, I mean, there's probably other dimensions about how traumatic it is, how difficult it is yeah. to recover from, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, like people, it's a dangerous thing to assign a word to, to to an experience, like even, or to a relationship, like saying a toxic relationship. Yeah. That, that can completely destroy your perception of that relationship. Yeah, absolutely. I remember this was the case with my childhood. Like I talked about being very abusive, but I, I've talked about how like there was a good amount of meaning there so that I didn't process it as abusive at the time. And I remember after I got out of that house and that culture, people would tell me, oh, your childhood was really abusive. And I was really confused by that because it's a total recontextualization of that narrative. It's like the things that I went through were not, you know, good and virtuous and had meaning, but rather those were like the result of, you know, parents who didn't like love you enough or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, even though the the concrete things that happened to me did not change, like no facts shifted, the fact that like the, the interpretation of the facts shifted caused me quite a bit of distress for a long time. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God, I'm, you know, I'm a traumatized, like abused person. Like I went through an abusive childhood and it was really hard for me. It made it worse. Mm-hmm. Like it's crazy the power that terms have. 